In this episode, we'll get into much more detail than we have done previously concerning specific techniques to categorize the market regime. So putting all of that good knowledge about volatility filters and trend filters to best use. But why is it so important to perform this categorization? While the price action of tradable assets will exhibit different characteristics depending on the market regime at any time. And if the characteristics of price action are changing, then surely our trading rules should also change or adapt to that regime. If we use the same rules for all different types of regime, then we risk our algo becoming less effective and losing valuable edge. And this is the reason why it's so important to be able to classify that market regime. But this all potentially comes at the price of statistical significance, with the risk of overfitting if we're not careful. All will be explained. Stay tuned. So as I said in the introduction, this episode is all about looking at better techniques to classify the market regime. And this follows on nicely from what we've learned previously, where we looked at how to use moving averages in order to classify the trend component of market regime. And don't forget that before that, we also looked at using an oscillator called Arun to do the same, and also using the percent based average true range to classify the volatility aspects of the market regime. Now, there will, of course, be other characteristics of market regime that can also be classified. But the trend and volatility components tend to be the most significant in my own experience. And for me, these have typically been the ones that have enabled me to make the biggest improvements in my algorithms. But if you do use other types of components in order to perform that categorization yourself, then everything I'm going to speak about today could also be applied to those. So based on what we've already learned, we now have multiple options available to us in order to categorize the market regime using the trend and volatility metrics. Now, one way of looking at this is that each classification of market regime is like a box. And so the market can be in any one of those boxes at any one time. And depending which box or classification the market regime is in, you then have the opportunity of adjusting your trading rules to specifically target the different behaviors or characteristics of that type of regime. But before we can do any of that, we first have to know how to set the boundaries or the edges of those classifications. And the model that I've shared with you before is this one. And this provides nine different classifications. Now, you'll remember in the introduction that I talked about statistical significance and alluded to a warning here. And if your experience is the same as mine, then some of these categorizations of the market regime will only have a small number of trades. So let's take a look at some examples. So where N is the number of trades that might fit into these categorizations, my experience is that you'll have a statistically significant number of trades in each of these categorizations. However, for myself and the rules that I use, this particular category does not, which effectively tells me that high volatility trading ranges don't often occur. And in these two categories, the number of trades tends to be somewhere in between. But this, of course, is using the indicators and the rules that I personally use for the classification. You will need to research this yourself and look at how many trades occur in each of these categories for the indicators and the rules that you're using. But the point here 
is that you might want to consider using a smaller number of categories in order to improve the statistical significance of each of them. And so as an example, you could use a three by two matrix instead. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend removing the trending categories. I would keep that at three, having one for an uptrend, one for a downtrend, and one for this non-trading condition. However, in terms of volatility, you might want to consider reducing that to just two, the high volatility and low volatility categories. And because now the same number of trades needs to be spread across these six categories instead of nine, clearly there will be more trades in each. And that will give you a more statistically significant idea of how well your system performs in each of those regimes. But if we're talking about using indicators in order to classify these different regimes, where should you define the threshold levels that either put the regime in one category or another? And the best way I found of doing this is to run my trading strategy in a backtest. And for each of the trades that are produced, I output information about the value of the two indicators I'm using to ascertain the trend or the volatility, and I write them to file so that I know what those values are at the time that the trade opens. What you can then do is open up that file and perform some analysis in a spreadsheet application. And then you'll not only be able to consider where to set those threshold levels, but also you'll be able to see how effective the trades are in each of those conditions. And based on that information, you can set your thresholds appropriately. What's more, you'll also be able to start thinking about how to adjust the rules of your trading system. So for this example here, I'm using a trend-based system. And based on the metrics you ascertain in that analysis I just spoke about, you might determine that you don't want to trade long when the market's trending down. And conversely, you might not want to trade short when the market's trending up. But this will all depend on the metrics you get from your system. And then for the final classification of not trending, you might determine from your metrics that it isn't worth trading at all under those conditions. Whereas if the trading strategy that you're performing this analysis on is more based on a mean reversion system, then you'll come to different conclusions. So here, for example, you might determine that it's worth trading both long and short when the category is high volatility non-trending. But for all of the other categories, your system doesn't perform that well at all. And so you might here decide not to trade at all under these conditions. But please don't just go away and implement this kind of rule in your system. You really need to do that research for yourself and for your specific trading systems in order for this to be as effective as possible. Now, next time, we'll take this concept even further and we'll be looking at the best way of combining oscillators with trend following indicators within this market regime classification system. Okay, so as normal, if that episode is already available, you'll see it top right here. Please do remember to give me a like if you've got value from this today. And until next time, trade safe.